All right, so for our first day, what we need to do is start to get acclimated with the basic uh, interface of Adobe Animate. It's part of the larger Animate suite, which of course there's Photoshop and Dreamweaver, Illustrator, Premiere, etc. We're going to use Animate. So let that start up. If you've got the book, I'm going to look at the first a uh, chapter of the book starting on page three. If you don't have the book, that's okay. You won't be missing a lot, but uh, I do recommend you get the book. The reason I picked the book, also this is for the Adobe Certified Associate Exam Preparation. Adobe has a series of tests that you can take that will then certify you as an expert or as a pro in the various software. Photoshop, Illustrator, etc. This book is for that purpose. If you go through this book and learn all the concepts in this book, you will have the skills necessary to take the test. And then you can become an Adobe Animate Certified Expert, which looks great on a resume as a job uh, attribute. And it shows you know how to use this software. They've got this book for every one of them, Photoshop, Illustrator, etc. So again, the books are optional. I highly recommend them. Get this one first. Learn Adobe Animate CC. When we first start up Animate, we've got... Now, my screen's going to look a little bit different than everyone also because I've got a smaller screen, so things may be a little scrunched up. But you're going to see the main uh, welcome screen here where you can quickly create projects. We're seeing we can create here under create new we have a couple of ways to create a project via HTML5 action script coding and look at this we'll be exploring these later also we'll be able to make apps that go on mobile devices the big flaw several years ago with flash was that it didn't work on mobile devices famously when the iPhone came out in 2007 it didn't run flash and people begged you know, can you make Flash work on an iPhone? Uh, and, you know, Steve Jobs, the way he was, was like, nope. So there was never Flash on the iPhone. On Android, you could run Flash on Android. But eventually, Android themselves kind of abandoned Flash. So Adobe was like, here's our big famous software. It doesn't work on the latest mobile devices anymore. Well, I guess we have to close up shop and do something else, right? No, they said, let's update our software to work on mobile devices. So the cool thing nowadays with either Animate or uh, Flash is that we will be able to create projects that work on mobile devices. And we will do this. We will make games and projects that work on a mobile device, meaning we can make a game that we can actually publish on the real app stores. We will be doing that. We will make games. You will be able to put it on Google Play or you know iTunes App Store and actually give it away or sell it. You will be able to do that eventually. So we first have to know about the interface. What are these buttons and tabs? How does it work? Um, here, at some point, I would recommend on your own, check out these links of introduction. Uh, check out on your own the getting started, the new features, and all of that. On your own, go check out the Flash Developer Center. Maybe you never get the book, but I would really be disappointed if you don't look at those learn items. You know, all the information is right there from Adobe, how to use the software the best way. If you're really interested in games, they've got their whole game development portal. We'll be covering it in class, of course, but you should check it out. There's things that I need to check out, too. This stuff changes all the time. And, you know, I teach at two different colleges, literally 15 classes per semester. So I don't have all the time that I would like to devote. Like, one of the things I want to try is this, the new camera tool. Apparently, what you can do is you can scan your face and make it part of an animation quickly in, in the software. I don't think the older version has it, unfortunately. But the newer version will let you do that. Yes? Not only that, but it allows you to do animations a little better. It allows you to zoom in into someone's face. Or, um, mm. or, or an animation that you've made. Mm -hmm. It's really awesome. Cool. So you've explored it? Yeah. Very cool. So this is something new then. Uh, another reason to get into the latest version of the software. And if you've got a webcam, if you've got a uh, uh, you know, webcam on your tablet or, or your uh, device, you'll be able to do something like that. 
So what we're going to do here at this point is we're going to create a document, start to explore this, and our first topic will be about uh, simply drawing. There's a nice note here that's on page five. Animate is by definition of the term creative software. You may have heard that, the, that creativity is something you're born with and that some people have it and others don't. Not true. Creativity may come, from, come naturally to some more than others, but all of us can become more creative people. It simply takes practice like anything else. So again, I, one of my hobbies is to draw. I'm always trying to draw something. I'm challenging myself this year to draw something different every day. Uh, I did it in 2011, and I haven't had a chance to do that again since that time. So, you know, always drawing, always trying, always playing with the software really helps you. You may not have the built-in natural ability, whatever that's defined is, to draw and such, but with practice you can do a lot. The first thing we'll do here is, under the Create New, let's select HTML5 Canvas. This is often the way that we're going to start working, with the latest version, the latest um, project. So click on Create New HTML5 Canvas. You get this interface, which is the latest uh, unified interface in all the Adobe software. You've got this sort of interface in Photoshop and everywhere else, so there's familiarity. But because this software is focused on animation, drawing, interactivity, games, there's several key differences. The first thing we have here in the main uh, area, this white box, that's our stage. Sometimes it's referred to as the canvas. This is the stage. So any drawings or animations that happen on the stage will be visible to people. Once we publish the project, once we make the game, only the stuff on the canvas is visible. The stuff outside of it is the pasteboard. This stuff doesn't show up when the project is published. So you could use that area to make yourself notes, to put uh, drawings here that you're going to use later. But those things will not show up when the project is published. So you've got your main canvas work area and the sort of temporary areas off to the side, the pasteboard. On the right side, all the way to the right, you'll see tools, panels, the tool panel. You have the properties panel. I'm going to zoom in and out also, maybe to make it a little bit easier on the screen. But you've got the Tools panel, Properties panel. On the bottom left, you've got the Timeline panel. We've got various tools. And on mine, I think mine looks a little bit different. My tool is in two columns. And yours is one column. I just have it on mine because my screen's smaller and it would cut off. So you've got tools. Let's play first with this brush tool. Uh, you have here paint brush tool. It's a little brush with a little ink coming out of it. Most of these tools will have a keyboard shortcut. You want to memorize these shortcuts as soon as possible. You can hover over a tool and it'll tell you what it is. So I don't know why they chose a, a Y for the brush. Maybe you think, of, think about it as, yes, this is the brush. So Y on the keyboard will quickly activate the brush tool. Click on that. Did you notice that as soon as you click the brush, this properties panel changed? A moment ago, it looked like this. It said the properties of my document are X, Y, and Z. And when I changed over to the brush, the properties of the brush are this. So something as basic as the brush tool itself has a bunch of properties that we'll be exploring and learning how they work. This is a context sensitive properties panel. Depending what tool you've selected, it changes. We're going to see that in um, Animate, 
Everything that we draw has a fill and a stroke. We'll see what that means a little later. But basically the colors. And then we've got various things like stroke. How thick is it? The style. We can have a basic line or a different kinds of lines widths and scales, smoothing and all of that. I won't change any of those properties just yet, but with this tool, write your initials. So, okay, it's a brush tool. It's a, it's a drawing tool. If you change the stroke a little bit, mine's set to 1. If I change it to like 15, I can get a thicker stroke, obviously. As you change these, you get different results. Um, you've got a color, stroke color. There's the inside and the outside, basically. The stroke color. If you click there, you can change the color. So if I was writing my initials several times, you see in my case, the C is off of the canvas. It's in the pasteboard. Therefore, it's not visible. It's not usable. In any other software, if you make a mistake, what's a quick way to take it back? Control Z, control Z or Command Z on the Mac. So you can Control Z several times to take you back. What if you went back too far? You have undo. You have undo, you have redo. In our case, we've got control Y or command Y. Up on the edit menu, it reminds you there to undo your last uh, action, control Z. To bring it back, control Y, control or command. So this flexibility of being able to do and redo, undo and redo is very powerful, very basic that we want to learn early on. Let's say I want to draw something and I need to get into the details. We have a tool that will let us get in close to the details. The magnifying glass, the zoom tool. It looks like a little magnifying glass. Keyboard shortcut Z, the zoom tool. If you click on that and then click, you can zoom in. So you can fine tune your drawing perfectly. You may be drawing a complex character, so you zoom into a section of it to be able to draw well in that area. If you want to unzoom, this is where then you, we're going to start to use these keyboard modifiers. Uh, you want to zoom in and zoom out. If you can hold uh, Alt on the keyboard, I think it's Option on the Mac, you click and it zooms out. So zoom in, zoom out. Contr uh, alt click or option click zooms you back out. Let's say I'm zoomed in a lot and I'm not in the right spot in my drawing. <coughs> I can use the, um, the scroll bars <coughs> on the bottom and on the right to scroll around, or I can use the hand tool, H. With the hand tool, I'm able to click and drag and move around like a piece of paper. If I'm drawing with real paper, I might be drawing in the corner here, and then I'm going to move over here. Well, I need to move to the other part of the paper. Same thing with here. We've got a canvas. We've got a sheet of paper to work with. With the hand tool, click and drag to move around. If you double click the hand tool, you can zoom in, zoom out. You can double click the zoom tool to zoom in and zoom out as well. So if I'm zoomed in a lot and I double click the magnifying glass, it zooms you back to 100% view. So I can also double click the hand tool to change my view. 
This also is evident up on the top right corner of the document. I'm at 100% zoom. If I want to zoom in closer, I've got various zoom levels here. I've also got fit to window, fit in frame. Click on those to see how those change. That's simply to get your document bigger or larger to make it easier for you to work on. Another thing that's really useful with zoom is on your uh, keyboard, you can press control or command plus, control minus, so you can quickly zoom in and out. So even with the zoom tool, there's a lot of little things about it. How do you zoom? And the point of there being so many ways to do the same thing is you can then figure out what works best for you. How do I quickly draw what I need to draw, do what I need to do? I need to zoom in, I need to zoom out. On the keyboard, Control plus, Control minus. I can use the tools, double click, I can use the drop down. I can also use the mouse. If I hold Control and then scroll on the scroll wheel of the mouse, that'll zoom me in also, zoom out. So we've seen the brush tool, zoom tool, hand tool. Let's switch up to this first tool at the very top, the selection tool, this black arrow. There's selection tool V, I guess, to make a very good selection. That's how you can remember that, V for very good selection. Click the select tool. Right away, you're going to see that animate doesn't behave like most drawing software you may have used. It's a vector-based software. We'll see what that means later. But behind the scenes, it's all math. It's all mathematical. And what that means is that we can reshape, we can redraw what we've drawn in very creative ways, very interesting ways, with the Select tool. Let's try this. Select tool, I'm going to click one time on one of the letters of my name. And notice what happens is that all or part of it may select. If you double click your letter, it should select it all. But if you single click, it may select a piece. Like I wrote the letter M. If I click one time, it only selected one of the legs of the letter M. If I double click the letter M, it should all select. So everything that you draw with Animate is mathematically defined behind the scenes. It's pieces uh, of a larger puzzle. So if you double click one of your letters of your name, you can then select it and move it. So as you move it around, Animate may give you different guides to help you line things up. We'll see that this is pretty useful if I'm trying to draw like a spaceship. And I want both sides of it to look the same. I want it to be symmetrical. These guides will help you uh, stay symmetrical. So if you double click to select, you can then click on the canvas or the pasteboard to deselect. It's selected because it's got the little mesh around it. Let's say I clicked once. I want to deselect, so I'll click outside of it to deselect. We're going to see that we can do really weird things like this. If you instead of clicking to select, it's, if instead you go to the edge of what you've drawn, your icon, your cursor should change. It'll either have a little curve or an angle. But if you get close to the edge of what you've drawn and then at that point click and drag, you can do this can start to push and pull the various edges of what you've drawn. So you saw a moment ago I had the name, the initials, and then here with the selection tool I'm able to deform the various shapes, I'm able to stretch them squash them, 
kind of get interesting things. And we're going to see how powerful this is when we draw for real, <clears throat> because you might not have drawn it perfectly the first time. Maybe you sketched it quickly, and then afterward you want to refine it. Um, I'm really impressed how Flash works in that you're able to draw something and then refine it over and over and over. So selecting the item, moving it around, selecting the edge of the shape and moving it around. It may, sh it may alter in ways you don't uh, expect. We'll see why as time goes on. Try this. If you drew some shape, you can double click it to select it. You will see its properties appear here. Even after you've drawn something, you can change some properties, such as the color. I had drawn my initials in a certain color a moment ago, and then now here, it's stroke. In this case, I'm going to change it to something else. So what we, the point of this is to get acclimated with the interface, with the way Flash works, with some of the tools. We're going to use properties a lot. Eventually, when we start to make programs, when we make websites and games and such, we need to see that, well, this object, this character that I drew, needs to be referenced via code. So we need to name the object in order for us to write the code to manipulate the object. So we would see that in properties. As you're drawing different things and changing your, your drawings, you'll see on the right side over here also another spot where your colors are, are set up. If you quickly want to go back to default colors, we have a tool right here. See how there's a little white square on top of a black uh, frame? Um, that reverts your colors back to the basic black and white. If you click on that, you see it sets your colors back to black and white. We have more than one painting tool right here. We went with this one first of all. There's another one right here. It looks like the same kind of brush. That one does have the keyboard shortcut of B for brush. If you select that, it's very similar to the previous ones, but it has a, a, a few less options. This one with the uh, paintbrush tool has the options to add some cool you know, edges and such. So as I draw, I can get these edges. But the plain old brush tool doesn't have a lot of <coughs> options to it. It relies more on you to actually create something interesting. But the great thing about this tool, we'll see later, is this one you can activate pressure sensitivity. When we break out the pen tablets, everyone can get a pen tablet if they would like. We will be able to use these pressure sensitive pens where you'll be able to draw naturally with a digital pen instead of a mouse. And then you'll see with pressure sensitivity, if I press a little bit, I'll get a thin stroke. If I press harder, I get a thicker stroke. And even the angle of where your hand is, like calligraphy. But this plain brush tool also has some options. Size. When you were young, did you ever play with a flip book? Did you ever have a textbook, for example, and on the bottom corner you drew a little person clicking a soccer ball, kicking a soccer ball on the bottom corner, and then you flip the book and it's kicking the soccer ball. So you were doing animation. You were doing classic animation, which is that you draw a little piece of the figure, then another one and another one, and you flip it all together, you've got an animation. That's what animation is nowadays, even if it's digital. So Animate has this, different sheets of paper, so to speak. Down on the bottom here, if we look at the timeline panel, we have layer one. We have layers like in Photoshop, 
and Illustrator. We'll talk about that later. But right now we have one frame. We have one sheet where we've drawn one thing. You can have an infinite number of sheets, an infinite number of frames. And so we've got one frame here. On the frame two, I'm on frame one. If you click on frame two, you see it's selected, frame one, frame two. And then right click frame two. You get a bunch of options here, all related to animation. So we've got frame one where the black dot is, and then frame two, nothing is there yet. Let's right click frame two, and at the top we'll do insert blank keyframe. These terms will make sense as we go on, but for the moment just right click your second frame, insert blank keyframe get a new sheet of paper, you get a new drawing screen. So it's blank, I'll be able to do what I want at this point, and uh, then as time goes on and we get into the animation portion of things, this is what we'll need to do. We made one drawing, we make another frame, we make another drawing, change it a little bit. We make another frame, another drawing, change it a little bit. And we will see how quickly this can happen. Because it's a digital document, we'll be able to do this very quickly. Yes? Can you call me when you have time? Yes. No you. yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about it. No problem. So uh, we will be able to make new frames, change the frames little by little, and animate it. And then because it's digital, we will be able to use things like tweens, which it will help us. I will draw the character in one position and then draw the character in another position, and Animate will draw in between for us, to various degrees. And that all happens in the timeline. Let's try this. I'm going to draw a happy face. Let's get the brush tool, the plain old brush tool. Draw a happy face. Again, we will get real tablets eventually, so we can draw for real. I'll make a happy face. I'm going to do a little quick animation here. I'm going to make the face change. So I've got one frame of the face. I need another frame. I need another page. So you can right click frame three. They're numbered here. Frame 1, 5, 10, etc., in between frame 1, 2, 3. Right click frame 3, insert blank keyframe. Okay, we get a brand new drawing surface. Yes, there will be ways to do this a lot more efficiently, of course, but for the moment then, I'm going to draw the face again, and it's going to look very different from the previous one. But I'm going to draw another face. We'll be able to do cool things like onion skinning later. But for the moment, I drew the face one way. Then I drew the face another way. Let's create another frame. Let's click, let's create a new frame on four and five. So draw the face a different way on frame four. Right click frame four, insert blank keyframe. Draw it differently again. And then frame five, frame five frame 5. Right click, insert blank keyframe, and draw it different one more time. So we've got five frames in our animation. To actually then see it, notice this red icon, the, the playhead we're on the fifth frame. If I want to go back to view the fourth frame, I can drag that back. There's the fourth frame. I can drag that back, third, etc. If I kind of, this is called scrubbing. If I click and hold and drag left and right, scrubbing, I can see it kind of back and forth. Here's what I've got. This would be like if I had the real piece of paper, I drew one frame and then I check it here and go back and go back, flip back and forth pages. 
this is it here. So I'm going to scrub this back and forth. So to actually see it really animated, let's go up to the control menu and select test. Let's see it actually animated. Go to control menu, test. This will open up, this will process it, this will open up the web browser, this will then get your animation and animate it. It's animating really fast because I never said anything else. I never set a frame rate, I never changed some of these options. So I'm going to close the browser. Close the browser to go back. When you did that test movie, it probably changed your panel down here to output. Switch back the timeline. If you um, if you work with, uh, if you do, if you, if you uh, play games, you probably know all about FPS. What's FPS? Frames per second. Frames per second. So if you're playing uh, a fast-paced game, a high FPS means you know it's nice and smooth. The game plays well. We have FPS also in our projects. Can anyone figure out what our FPS is for this project? We can see that right here. On the timeline, our project is running at 24 FPS. We're going to see that in animation, we can do really well with very few, very low FPS. We don't need 60 frames per second. We can do pretty well with lower speeds. Mine is still too fast, however. Yours is still probably animating too fast. So let's try this. If you select, if you go to the select tool and you click anywhere on the canvas, so you get your select tool, click on the canvas, you get the properties of the project. There's a spot there for you to change the FPS. It's set to 12. I can click and put it, or it's set to 24. I can click and change it to 12 and press enter. Now my project will run at 12 FPS. If I wanted, I could do 60 or more. But I'll put it for 12. Type the value, press Enter. And then we'll go back to Control, Test. So change your FPS, go back to Test. You should see a difference. It's not animating in such a runaway way, it's a little bit more visible. So again, with animation, we don't need to run at 60 FPS. 12 will work really well. 24 and those sorts of speeds. So let's pause here. Anyone need a little help? Do you have something drawn? Do you have a few frames? Are you seeing the result there? Anyone need a little help? So So we were drawing a few things animating We're going to take a quick break and when we come back we'll look at more of the interface it's uh, 11, well, these clocks are all wrong, kind of. Uh, I've got it here at 11, it's about 11.04, 11.05.
take a short break until 11.10. And then when we come back, we'll uh, do some more animate. So we'll take a short break until 11.10, and then we'll keep going. <laughs>